Just this afternoon, the state legislature passed a six-week abortion ban. The bill, when signed, which Governor Ron DeSantis has already signaled he will do, will make abortion access even more difficult in the Sunshine State, which right now outlaws abortion after 15 weeks. CNN Steve Contorno is with us from St. Petersburg, Florida. And Steve, the current 15-week ban is on the books, has no exception for rape and incest, but this law is a six-week ban but it would include exceptions for rape and incest? Yeah, that's right, Jake, but only to a point, and opponents of this bill say it will still make Florida one of the most restrictive states in the country to get an abortion. Let me go through what this bill actually does. As you said, it bans abortion in most cases after six weeks. There are exceptions for rape, incest, and for victims of human trafficking up until week 15. But after week 15, the only exceptions are for if the life of the mother's at risk or if there's a fatal defect. And even then, you have to get two doctors to sign off on it. It also prohibits abortion by telehealth and via mail, so you can't get medication sent to you by the Postal Service in Florida. And then it also requires the state Supreme Court uh, to take action or a change in the Constitution before this takes effect. There's a quirk in Florida's Constitution that includes a privacy clause, and in the past, the state Supreme Court has interpreted that to include uh, a right to abortion. But that Supreme Court has shifted dramatically in recent years, and now DeSantis has actually appointed four of the six members, and he'll get to appoint another one soon. So, Jake, abortion rights advocates believe that this Supreme Court is likely to overturn that privacy clause, and, and really, at that point, it'll be a six-week ban in the state. I, I just saw polling suggesting that it, it's a, a majority of the American people oppose a six-week ban, and that even among Republicans, it's like 45-45 against and in favor of a six-week ban. Uh, I assume that Governor DeSantis, in addition to supporting the principles uh, behind this bill, thinks this, this is going to help him politically, perhaps? Well, certainly, if he's going to enter the Republican primary for president, that it, this is an issue that is often a litmus test. He's going to be going up against President Donald Trump, who appointed several of the Supreme Court justices that overturned Roe v. Wade. Uh, but like you said, this is an issue that Democrats believe has given them an advantage and given them some, some tailwinds in recent elections. We just saw what happened in the Wisconsin Supreme Court race there and a whole bunch of midterm races, abortion loomed large as well. But in Florida, where Republicans control both chambers by a large margin, if DeSantis didn't take action, it would have been an issue for him in the GOP primary, Jake. All right, Steve Contorno uh, in uh, St. Petersburg, Florida, thanks so much. Attorney General Merrick Garland is preparing to take the fight over the abortion pill to the U.S. Supreme Court. This comes after an appeals court declined to ban the abortion drug Mifepristone in a ruling late last night, but it made access to the drug more difficult. CNN's Joan Biskupic is with us to explain. Joan, what did uh, Attorney General Garland have to say about bringing this case before the Supreme Court? And what's the timeline here? Sure. Good afternoon, Jake. This is what uh, the Attorney General said in a statement around noon. The Justice Department strongly disagrees with the Fifth Circuit's decision. We will be seeking emergency relief from the Supreme Court to defend the FDA's scientific judgment and to protect Americans' access to safe and effective reproductive care. Now, Jake, we haven't seen the full filing yet, but I imagine that uh, the Attorney General will take strong issue with yet another court second-guessing the FDA's uh, scientific expertise here. Uh, as you know, the, the validity of the drug dates to the year 2000, and then the restrictions on access that are at issue, they date to 2016. So we've got a lot in place, and just a reminder that this medication abortion protocol is the most common form of, uh, that women are using today in America to end their pregnancies. So there's a lot at stake here. And, you know, it's now going back to the Supreme Court that completely eliminated the constitutional right to abortion and left it to the states. So medication abortion is a very crucial part of that ability for access. Also for uh, women who have suffered miscarriages, uh, you rely on mifepristone. As we mentioned, this all comes after the ruling from the appeals court last night which didn't ban mifepristone, but kept restrictions around the drug. What do those restrictions yeah, look like? Yeah, exactly. Uh, uh, one would be just in terms of how, how a woman could actually obtain the drug. Uh, since 2016, there was a, no more, longer an in-person requirement after a woman had actually met with a physician. 
Now we're back to if this, if the, everything stays the way the Fifth Circuit wants it over the next 24 hours, uh, no longer could a woman get the drug by mail after the initial consultation with a physician. So that's one thing. And the second thing is the window for availability uh, would decrease generally from currently 10 weeks down to seven weeks of pregnancy. So those are, those are significant access issues that would be rolled back if the Supreme Court does not stop the effect of the two lower court uh, decisions.